I'm Keith Badger. I serve on the Osage County Conservation District. We are in Osage County. I farm with my brother. We're largely a crop operation, corn, soybean rotation, sometimes some wheat when it fits in, and we have some cattle. Soil health is maintaining the ecosystem within the soil while producing a commodity at a profit, so important. Well, we had planted crops behind our fall harvested crops. So we would plant wheat or rye or other things, largely for cattle grazing. And then when the subject came up, kind of realized, well, what we were doing was fitting in to what the idea was, was a living root providing for that ecosystem in the soil. So I would guess 15 to 20 years, not consistently every field everywhere, but as it fit into the operation with the cattle and the crops and the timing of it all. So it's been going on longer than we even realized that it was soil health. It's always been either getting it planted Sometimes wet falls are a challenge, dry falls are a challenge, and then managing it. When we realized that keeping it there was beneficial to the soil, keeping that living root in place, then it became, let's not overgraze this, let's be able to move the livestock on and off as, it, as it's beneficial. And when do we terminate it? When, you know, to keep it from becoming unmanageable and intruding on the next crop. So, and that's grown with time and with the research that so many others have done as to how long we can push a cover crop into the spring before we terminate and move on to our uh, commodities. Um, wheat, cereal, rye, turnips, radishes, um, we put out in some demonstrations with the conservation district, some other varieties, but we quickly learned that when it's dry, sometimes things don't work, but the advantage to a mix is something will work. Something will come up, get established, and, and do what you're asking it to do. But um, you're back to that. We're kind of at the will of what Mother Nature provides us probably about eight to nine years I've been on the board. Um, I'd always served in uh, agricultural uh, groups, uh, promotional activity groups in some fashion. Um, I had served uh, down in that office on another board and when I was coming off of it by term limits, the conservation district manager came over and asked me if I would serve there. I knew what conservation districts did in terms of uh, uh, resource management, you know, terraces, waterways. I had no idea the extent that, that they reached out in other, in other uh, medium, in other words, education and uh, public public knowledge of what you're doing so that it's been a growing and learning experience I, I found it to be one of the more rewarding boards I've been on it we used to be just thought of as the old terrace and waterway people we had the money to do to put the structures in to stop that erosion and with the on ongoing uh, and growing practices of soil health, of cover crop, of less tillage. And our, our focus has been to promote newer practices that disturb the ground less, but maintain the profitability, if not increase it, retain nutrients in the ground to, to promote to people on the urban side that this improves water quality 
Soil health is a sustainable uh, practice. In other words, we pass on quality soils from generation to generation and healthy soils produce healthy foods and a quality, sustainable food supply. A lot of our, my experiences with NRCS are technical. And so I, I'll show a concern for, let's say erosion or maybe a conservation structure isn't, isn't performing the way I want and they come out and they provide the technical advice. In other words, what do I need to do to change? And that's grown now in that they can provide advice on soil health. And so you're talking about a uh, biological advice, not just an engineering uh, advice. So if, uh, for example, I'm thinking about, about a cover crop, but I want the cover crop to perform strictly in erosion control, they can advise on a seeding rate, uh, maybe give some ideas of what plants would work the best, what kind of application, and, and uh, how I should expect uh, that to perform for me. I probably started with it, but for any, anybody that's an agricultural producer, what I've come to understand of soil health is the ecosystem underneath the soil is just as important as our ecosystem above the soil. And what we do with the cover crops and reducing our tillage impacts promotes that ecosystem under the soil. And that's why cultural change is very important. And it's important that the public knows that we're making these changes because what they see as they go by our farms is changing. Why, why does it look like you planted something and now you're killing it off and planting something else? And it was because we kept feeding that ecosystem through the process of a cover crop and photosynthesis till we could get to the next spot. We also retained our nutrients so we're doing a better job of putting what's needed, when it's needed, in the right amounts out there for our crops. And the runoff from our soils is cleaner. And that's important. It's important to me because we get our water from the water district just as everybody else does. We get our food from the grocery stores just as everybody else does. And so, it's important to me that quality leaves the farm and it's available to us as well as, well as anybody else.